take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful. Hello, welcome back to the Wisconsin Gravel Cyclist. This is Logan, your host. Today, we're starting the first video in a three video series about the Trek Checkpoint. Um, I recently was able to pick up a Trek Checkpoint at Trek Store in Wausau, Wisconsin. And so far, I'm really enjoying this bike. And that's the first video that we're going to do today is just the ride characteristics of the Trek Checkpoint. And go over the ins and outs of it, how it feels on different terrains, um, asphalt, gravel, loose gravel, all that good stuff. So stay tuned for the video here and we'll go over a few of the ride characteristics of the Trek Checkpoint. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now we go! All right, the first part that I want to talk about here with the Trek Checkpoint SL5 is descending on hard packed gravel. The first thing that I notice with this bike going down hard packed gravel, it is it is planted. It has a good long wheelbase, and I, you know I don't feel a lot of side to side movement or anything like that. It's very very smooth on hard packed gravel like this. It's no different than, you know, if you have brand new fresh black top and you're taking your fast road bike with, you know, skinny tires down this. So on hard packed gravel, there's no hesitation to just send it, let her rip down hills like this and uh, and just go for the go for the gravy. You know, that being said, there were some washboards. That's unavoidable here, spring in Wisconsin before the road is great. Overall, descending on hard packed gravel, um, like this red granite stuff we have here, plus one for the Trek checkpoint. The next part that I want to talk about here is descending on a blacktop. So again, this bike benefits from a good long wheelbase. As you can see, we're getting the seat up there now. You know, we're into the high 30 mile an hour range, going down a long straight road. So we're good, relatively good blacktop. Again, not afraid to just send it straight down the road here. Top speed in this case was right around 38 miles an hour in a tuck. Um, again, no hesitancy from me with uh, with the bike. I felt that there were no limitations. Um, very comfortable. Felt very, very nice here. All right, the next part that I want to talk about here is just flat, hard-packed gravel with a little bit of rise. So in this particular instance, the gravel, again, it's still really, really hard-packed here. This particular road has yet to be graded this year. And I find that with this bike, the bumps are soaked up very, very well with the rear ISO speed. The advantage that my bike does have, I do have the Bontrager Pro ISO Core uh, handlebar on there as well that makes the front end very very comfy uh, with the addition I like to run a 40 millimeter tire in this case I'm running the Bontrager uh, team issue GR1 and so far that it's been a good tire um, can't complain uh, plenty enough grip for these conditions in this hard pack with a little bit of a uh, sprinkled um, rocks over the top of the hard base I really uh, uh, notice that when you start to go uphill, that bottom bracket area doesn't flex a whole lot. It seems like it's pretty stiff, pretty solid uh, with with the Trek checkpoint. In my case, I have the SL model, the SL5, uh, with the GRX components and the shifting with the 2 by going uphill like that, just a little rise like that. Very nice, very crisp. Doesn't miss a beat on this hard packed flat flatter road. Um, works very, very nicely. The next point I'd like to make on flat road like this is this bike, again with the long wheelbase, feels very, very planted and it feels like it just wants to go. 
If you put down the power, I notice that this bike will just go forward in a straight line very, very well. That being said, on flatter ground like this, um, with a, a 40, um, 40 centimeter wide bar on my particular uh, bike, 52 size frame, um, I didn't feel that it was overly twitchy or anything like that either. So that's a, definitely a benefit as well. It, it feels planted, did not feel twitchy with a 40 centimeter bar on it. So all in all, um, flat, hard pack like this, again, another point for the track. And last but not least, of course, we have to talk about the ride characteristics of the track checkpoint on loose gravel or rougher terrain. So in this case, this is a really good example of what a graded road, graded gravel road would look like in Wisconsin in spring. So in this particular instance, the first things that I'm noticing is that rear ISO speed decoupler of the track checkpoint really does a nice job of just smoothing things out. You really don't feel a whole lot uh, when it when it comes to road noise and chatter. It just feels nice and smooth. The other things that I noticed too, you know, I'm sure that the the 40 millimeter uh, Bontrager GR1 team issue tires that I'm running have something to do with that as well. Generally, I'll run 39 PSI in the rear, 37 in the front, and that's for me a 200 pound rider. That feels very comfortable to me. The other thing that I will note in my case, uh, the front end feels very, very soft and, and cushioned as well. I am running the ISO Pro core handlebar from Bontrager on this, so it is a carbon handlebar that uh, definitely soaks up some of the bumps and things like that as well. I wouldn't hesitate, though, to leave the, uh, the GR Elite handlebar that comes with the bike on it. Um, with a 40 mil tire, even a 38, you probably wouldn't notice uh, much difference at all. Um, in terms of handling, it handles no different than on any other road that I've taken this on so far in this ride. It just feels smooth, planted, doesn't feel twitchy at all, even with a 40 you know centimeter handlebar. Um, overall, great experience on this bike so far. Really looking forward to. Uh, getting more information out there in the next uh, couple videos and overviews of the componentry of this bike. So looking forward to sharing more of this information uh, from Wisconsin here with the Wisconsin Gravel Cyclists. So if everyone could do me a huge favor, like and subscribe and uh, you know help keep pushing the videos along, that'd be greatly appreciated. So I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you for watching and let's go for a ride.